what a thing that is. Um, bravo. Um, this is very beautiful, which I mean both as a great compliment and as a little bit of an objection. Um, because, I mean, first of all, the compliment, though, really is genuinely very beautiful. But the reason that it's simultaneously a little bit of an objection is that Beethoven is an extreme person mm -hmm. and an in terribly intense one. And I felt at times that your uh, focus on the beauty of the piece and your emphasis on the beauty of the piece was sometimes at the expense of the, the phenomenal intensity of this music. Um, you know, as an example, you know, just again to put it in context, it was, I was saying to Scott that it's difficult to talk about the first movement of 110 because the piece is aiming towards the end. In this case, I mean, this is the main event, but it's a bit hard to, to look at it out of context. And the context is so important. You know, this movement arrives on the heels of these two sonata form movements, which are as almost as short as any two sonata movements I can think of. You know, they're extreme compression. They take, what, about s l less than six minutes to play t together, you know? And then on the heels of that come these variations, which are not only double the length of both of those movements combined, but they're, they feel unbelievably expansive because the theme is put through its paces, you know? Because it's, you play the theme at the beginning, and then he, he, um, he exposes it to all of these elements that you didn't think was possible. You, you cannot anticipate from the theme that this could happen and this and this and this and this, and then we come back to it at the end and it's like unbelievably transformed, right? Uh, and I found it hard to focus on that expansiveness because I thought that your, your ear was trained so much on the small beauties of it, rather than sort of the the, the big picture of it and the the, the incredible intensity. Of it. That's a, I really to me a basic fact about Beethoven that even when the character of the music is tender, as it obviously is here, it is tender still in a big way and and in an incredibly intense and fervent way. And sometimes I found it I found the edges of the music to be over softened, yeah. So that's kind of what I'd like to, to look at a little bit. Um, so I think one of the challenges of this theme uh, is that its rhythm is so regular that it's sometimes hard to find its shape, you know, because especially in the accompaniment, you have basically every quarter played the whole time. Uh, and I have, uh, I worked on this with another one of the students this morning, so I have apologies for the repetition. But I find that one of the important things um, about this theme is that the two halves of it are very different. That the first half is, to me, very clearly divided into four parts. And that in each two-bar phrase, the first bar goes to E, the second bar goes to B, right? Right, again. To the B, and then to the E, to the B, and then to the E. Right, there's a total, not even symmetry, let's be honest, predictability about it, right? Also, and if it's E, B, also it's a harmonic thing. It's one to five, one to five, one to five, one to five. <laughs> then you have a phrase which goes adventuring, you know, and there's one very long line without any divisions inside it. Until maybe here, but even that's sort of a comma, not a period. Right, so that's the, the one thing about it. The other, I think, very significant thing is it has this the center of gravity in almost every measure is the second beat, right? There's this good right? And even in the second half, until one, two, finally one. 
you know, we, we actually open up on the downbeat. And there is this somehow sense of something which had been slightly off balance being resolved, you know. And I, I think that is one uh, um, piece of information which can be very helpful in putting the theme together, that there's something which you're waiting for and leading towards which only gets answered and resolved. And then we're ready for a conclusion. The other thing that happens at the end is that it was always one, one to five, one, again and again, now five to one, right? So there is this feeling that what is always open, 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 close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that I think those hopefully those ideas can help put a little bit of a, of a give a, a bit of extra form mm -hmm. to the to the theme. Try from the beginning again. Sure. Yeah. hand obviously has to be interested in the small contours of the theme. Can you use the left hand to make a bigger shape? So rather than feeling each beat so much, think at least two bars together. And then you can start again if you want. Much better. Um, I just wanted to now sort of break it down a little bit further. So if it's one to five, one to five, one to five, one to five, there are subtle differences, right? In the first bar phrase, two bar phrase, you go down to the E and down to the B, right? Now you go down to the E, but now up to the B, right? And now farther down, and again down. And for the first time, up to the E and leading towards the second bar, which is important because I think, I hate talking about strong, weak, strong, weak, but sometimes it's useful. I think basically it's strong and weak. And then again, strong and weak. And again, strong. But now, maybe this is the weak bar and a leading, and this is the strong one. I mean, it's still piano, obviously, but that, that the point is that you lead towards the second bar, whereas the first three phrases are one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, right? Um, yeah, but also just emphasizing the up and the down and also the intervals. And then that you really feel the rise takes a different kind of effort from fall, right? Yeah. Once again. the last second bar, the fourth second bar, to be more different because um, and now right the harmony is so much darker. It's like a thousand times darker than the other ones. It has to be much and it's prepared in this different way with this crescendo. We come back to piano but 
you know, piano can mean about 11,000 different things, and this is piano myst molto misterioso, right? The other, the very last thing I'd like you to think about is, you know, so obviously these second beats are elongated, right? Because the bass changes, it means you get two harmonies on the same note, right? Right? And then, and now with the A sharp. I want you to really listen to that, and again. And this is the most significant one now. The E against the C sharp and against the C natural. And you keep an ear on the long note and hear, feel it evolve as the bass, as the bass changes in the other. One more time. So the fall, falling farther has to take more effort. You know, going from here to here and going from there to there cannot be the same. You know, there, there's just more territory to be traversed. Like, I'm not saying you have to necessarily wait longer, but we need somehow, you have to use something in your arsenal to communicate more effort. Yes, that's much better. Maybe not with the melody, but with all of the rest of the voices, instead of thinking one, two, three, one, two, can you think two, three, one, two, th always leading to the next downbeat. So that, again, that you, if you play one, two, three, one, two, three, you emphasize the downbeats. If you play two, three, one, two, three, one, you de-emphasize them, which is a very, very useful way of making the phrase longer. You know, and that's, again, I think that the essence of this theme is that you have this first half, which is this regimented four sets of two bars, and then the second half of the phrase, you know, we start from away from home and we go on this very long, uninterrupted journey back to finally... Just from, from home. So this one, a one bar phrase, or I mean, it's an eight bar phrase, but I mean, there is, again, this Saraban thing where you lead towards the second beat. Mm. And, but now you go to the second beat of the next bar. And then come away only. Yeah, once more. Yeah, just from... Yeah, so then it has to be simple. If the whole phrase has been when we finally have the correction of when you leave it, don't be complicated. It's like that, that, that bridge has been crossed. Yeah, so don't, you know, don't go back over to the side you started on. Um, once more from... Once 
to leave. And then feel five one. First variation he writes mezzo voce. I mean the theme he writes mezzo voce, mo voce. Now he writes molto espressivo. And on top of that, you've had kind of chorale texture, nothing in the upper half of the piano. Suddenly the the melody, the top line, um, frees itself from this re region and from you know being tightly bound to the other voices. I would love for the, the sonic profile to instantly change. <laughs> you know that, again, I think the word is radiance. You know, that the sound before has a, a mellow quality and now it should have, you know, the, the brightness of the sun. Yeah, can you just play the last bar to, just to hear the, the contrast? Again, emphasizes in the first half of this theme this two bar idea, oh, sorry, and this strong weak idea by putting <coughs> always an accent on the first bar. So it's So I would really avoid any kind of emphasis, right, and said, and then again. I think that really will help with the, with the shaping of it. You know? And also, you know, obviously one of the, the real problems, or at least difficulties in a variation movement, and especially a variation movement like this, where the variations are in so many essential ways very different from the theme, is finding these threads these, that run through all of them. You know? Because I think the, the power in a set of variations is feeling that the theme is being um, explored psychologically in this case, I would say. It really is that kind of thing where you feel like it's been, it's been turned inside out. But you have to recognize that the material comes from the theme for it to work, you know? So again, I think this general idea of this shape where you have one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the second half of the, of the theme, that really is, a, is common to all, of, all six of the variations. Right, just from them. <laughs> they really shine. Beautiful. Obviously, the main thing is the harmonic difference, but there's also a difference in shaping, right? In, in the rhythm, right? So you have this long note, and then that, and then, and then, but now a constant string of eighth notes. So again, I said that I thought that the second, the, the fourth two bar phrase goes to the second bar, I think it's the same in this variation. So instead of being, it's, it's very much leading to that point. Play once more. Strong. Yeah, but there are these natural stopping points, and, uh, but here there isn't one. 
Mm. So it feels it feels imposed on the music if you play. Right, you know. Follow the rhythm. Um, just from. a little bit excessive. I think it just is, a, it is about feeling the dissonance. This is still the emphasis. It's still the, the shape of the bar is still a T, da, 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 right? Um, it's like a, just a little internal tremor. Yeah, once more from... Again, extreme distance, you know. This is already so much more open than anything happened in the theme, but that's so much farther still, so. So he, if you can really use the crescendo to lead you to a kind of an openness of sound that hasn't happened in the piece yet. Um, play once more from. Too complicated. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the 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 drama is over at that point. You know, he after this, if it wasn't clear already, he even writes mezzo voce so that we know we go back to the world of the opening. And there's something ab ab about that that also has a, a lightness, which you know, again suggests this is no longer life and death matters. You know, I actually think that that if you really allow the end of the variation to be more. Um, Semplice, then it will help prepare. Because I think part part of um, the challenge of the first half of this is trying to figure out how this theme, which has such a solemnity about it, evolves into you know, which is a romp, right? And I think there should be the feeling that each variation is progressively less churchy. You know, that the theme really does have this sense of, of all, I don't want to say a sermon, but again, a real solemnity. And then the fact that there's more of a melody accompaniment quality means that the first variation is already a bit less, and then in the ending you find a little bit more lightness, which progressively leads us to the more playful. And that that really sets up, because if we tried to go from the theme to that, it would sound outrageous, right? So I think you need to really feel that there is um, an emotional trajectory from um, gravity towards play. Yeah, and you know, again, you can use that. Play just from the climax of the variation and then go on. but it's almost too seamless. Because what I'm missing is the sense, I would love to be able to play so seamlessly, but I'm missing the sense of two voices talking to one. It sounds very much as if it's totally unified, whereas that there's a kind of a sense of a, of a very childlike, I mean, I'm talking yodeling in one time. There is, it's, it's a very Beethoven quality that he can be sublime and, uh, and, uh, very human all at the same time, you know. It's, I think it's really good to remember that like even though these pieces are totally heavenly, they're also like, they're written like a, by a person, you know, with, with humor 
and a sense of play and um, you know irritability, which one also hears in this music sometimes. You know, and I think here there, this sort of sense of very kind of childlike play is very important. I think your, your, I think your length is fine, but there's maybe something a little bit too sad in your articulation. I wonder if there can be, um, you know, it's a question of whether you want our focus to be on the way you enter the key or on the way you leave it. And I think, again, the, the sense of springy, um, articulation is what I would, I, I think you would more usefully convey, yeah. And again, not too connected between the pants, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's, that's possibly too short now. It's more, I know, it's, it's, a, it's such a horrible thing in a master class to ask people to change things. And of course, like, that's the idea. You experiment, and naturally you go too far the other way, but there's 100 people listening. It's awful. Um, it's a really, it's a special sort of public humiliation, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, what, I just somehow think that, that the feeling of leaving the key could have been more um, prominent than it was. It was not a length. Sort of like you know when a, when you hear a string player play notes from the string and very with a sense of buoyancy. I guess buoyancy would be the word. That's what I'm looking for, not shortness. which maybe uh, concerns me a little bit is that each two note gesture, the two notes sound too equal to me. Rather than yom yom pom, bom pom. I think probably based on the rhythm, they should always be leading. Yom pom, bom pom, bom pom, bom pom. This is a composed uh, repeat, right? It, you know, in the theme, it was the two halves had literal repeats. In the first variation, the two halves have literal repeats. Here, instead of, you know, how would it work? Right, which would be a logical progression of events based on how the theme in the first variation went. Instead, we get something totally different. So I think you need time. If you don't take any time, your message to the audience is that this is just a continuation of the same phrase, the same idea, the same character, the same feeling. And instead, I think when this comes, you know, he writes again, the, you know, leggermente, lightly, teneramente, tenderly, you know? So I think you cannot, I don't, I, at least I would not be able to get, I, I can't find the tenderness in sound without a little bit of, Space in the beginning. So I would say finish your first idea. And make sure that there's enough on that first note that the second note sounds like a caressed reaction to it. Um, is there anywhere in the middle of that that you could start that would be semi reasonable? But your pulse is not. I hear two, three, four, five, six, instead of one, two, three. At, at most, it could be even one, one. Because, you know, again, I think one of the most important factors in music, all music, in determining pulse, rate of motion, is harmonic rhythm, right? And the harmony is moving basically at the rate of one harmony per bar. So we don't need to hear six pulses inside it, right? Um, once well, just from there is fine. I really think at most in three. Yeah, 
Yeah, and this, I mean, this now, even though it's part of the repeat, bears some relationship in texture to that, right? So I wouldn't pedal all the way through. I would try to reintroduce, again, a, li a little bit of buoyancy into the sound, whereas this is plush. I think now this is a little bit more like that. Yeah, can you play once more from... question of the harmonic rhythm. If it was, then I would understand why you were giving me so much emphasis on every single eighth note. But in fact, why do you want me to pay attention to that? You know, I think that's an, it's an incredibly important thing that we have to ask ourselves as performers. Like, what do you want your audience to hear? You know, because they will only hear what you tell them to hear. You know, and uh, they will also hear everything that you tell them to hear. If you say this is important, then it will sound important. You know, and there's nothing actually of interest happening. You know, it moves by a bar until then. There's two harmonies in that bar, but you know, again, if there's not a harmonic event or I mean, is there an interesting melodic one? I wouldn't think so, right? Then don't, emph don't place emphasis where none is warranted. And then, then. Because the, the problem is that if everything is equally important, then nothing is important. You know, that if you, you are, and you are the one who is responsible for the hierarchy, you know? You cannot ask them to guess. You know, you have to be the one to say say with the playing, not in a didactic. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that way, but in a just a guiding the listener through the through the piece. One just right from there. So with, forget everything I said about articulation and just start this right here again and think, just think of the word playful. And remember, it, at the beginning it was piano, now it's pianissimo, right? Mm -hmm. Much better. to stop, but I just wanted to say, yeah, I think that a lot of that sounds really much better, not that it didn't sound beautiful before. And I think that, that the main ideas, again, are, you know, Beethoven, whatever the idea is, whatever the character is, he tends to go all the way with it, you know? And you have to be willing when you play his music to go all the way with him, you know? And I just think that sometimes, uh, your desire for everything to be beautifully shaped, which is obviously a, a product of your having an excellent ear, you know, is a little bit counterproductive in this music, which wants extremity as part of its profile. And the other thing is that the, I think that your, your attention to the detail sometimes, and this is a dilemma we all go through as performers, sometimes may, makes it hard to hear the big picture. And in a movement like this, which is, 13 minutes long uninterrupted and is, you know, should feel, even though so much of it unfolds softly and lyrically, like a grand trajectory. I think that was the part that was a little bit compromised. I mean, especially in a movement like that, which is variations bookended by the theme, you know, because there has to be this feeling when you come back that the theme has been permanently transformed by these events that have happened to it in the meantime. So I think if you can maybe just now that you, I mean, you, you play the piece with tremendous authority and, and great beauty, place your, thor your focus a little bit more on the large picture, then it would add yet another dimension to what you're already doing with it. 
Beautiful. Bravo. Awesome. Yeah.